It's our tradition to share the scripture together here at church, so if you'd like to read with us, please do. We'll be, uh, we read from the New Living Translation. We're going to share the Easter story. Surprise! <laughs> some, some Easter's, as a pastor, you're tempted to try a different scripture, but you know, don't do it. Don't do it! <laughs> so let's read uh, from Mark's Gospel. Uh, one of my favorite versions uh, because of the unexpected e- endings. But let's share from end beginning. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 7. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out to purchase burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, Just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way there, they were asking each other, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Amen. Well, Jesus has risen from the dead. That's what we celebrate today. That's our faith. That's the foundation of what it means to be a Christian. And that's our joy and our hope. If you believe nothing else, that's what you need to believe. That Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus has conquered everything, even death. That the tomb was empty. And when you have empty things, I hope the empty tomb comes to your mind. I hope that you're mindful that the tomb was empty and that is our victory. It's hard to have empty things. It's hard sometimes to have space for that. But when we claim the empty as holy And more importantly, as victorious, it changes things. It gives us surprises. You know, if you read the Bible at all, you find out that our God is a God who likes surprises. That our God is a God who likes to show up in unexpected places and use unexpected people. Hence why we boldly say, you are are able to be used by God. And in fact, you might be God's chosen messenger. Yes, you. In whatever state of health you might be in, in whatever age from the young to the old, you might be God's messenger today or any day. That God isn't picky. In fact, he he seems to enjoy using the unexpected to be a surprise. And the Easter story is no exception. Even though it's familiar... Last week we talked about how familiar things can kind of, kind of, we miss things about them. And that might be with the Easter story. It might be very familiar to you. But let's see if we can find some unexpected things again this morning, some surprises. I didn't notice until this time, even though I've read, of course, the Easter story, I don't know, lots of times. But do you notice that Mark starts out the Easter story on Saturday night. Hmm. The Easter story doesn't start on Sunday morning, although it is Sunday morning for the Jewish people. Do you remember that the Jewish people, days are different than ours? Their day starts at sundown and goes to the next sundown versus we start our day at sunrise. And so when we read the Easter story for Mark, we know that on the first day of the week for them, on Sunday evening, that they started the day by going out and buying burial spices. So that's a hard thing to think about starting your day and your week on. 
that you have to prepare for death. But that's what they were about. They were about doing the work that they knew they could do. Jesus died Friday afternoon. Before sundown, they wanted him in the tomb because of the Sabbath that was coming that was holy. And it was also the week of Passover, so it was an extra holy time. We know that uh, burial preparations couldn't be done. They were hastily done, what little could be done. We know that the people who moved him from the cross were unexpected and surprising. We know that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, Joseph was a Sanhedrin. He was an important, holy person. He also was wealthy. We know that Nicodemus was a Pharisee who'd visited Jesus according to John 3, at night. And both of these men risked their reputation to go get Jesus, to permission to get Jesus off the cross and to take him to the tomb. Do you think these two men had ever done anything like that before, had ever handled a dead body? I assure you they had not. That was unexpected that they would do it. And so maybe the women felt that they needed to do a better job. (laughs) I know my husband likes to help around our house, and I am grateful for that. But I am always amazed at what doesn't get done. (laughs) You know, I last night something didn't get put away in the refrigerator, and I he was cleaning up the table, and I said, "Hmm, interesting. (laughs) He's really picky about food sanitation. So it's funny what doesn't get done." So the women wanted to do things that was not surprising. And they wanted to do something well for Jesus. You know, it's not surprising you might want to do things for people that you love that have gone on ahead, who've died. Maybe you've stood by the tombstone and, or the graveside, and maybe you've placed flowers on it. Maybe you've shed some tears, or maybe you've gone to their favorite place. Maybe you've taken a walk where you always walk with them. You know, that's part how we seek comfort and encouragement. If you're going through a difficult time, and I know that Easter doesn't make it just automatically because it's Easter. Wow, everything's wonderful. In fact, Easter might cause even more conflict than we normally have in our lives. But no, if you're going through a difficult time then it's important to do what the Easter story tells us, that the day after Jesus died was probably the worst day for all of his disciples and followers, and yet they rested because they practiced the Sabbath. They took space. And so that's something for each of us to do, to take space so that you have time to process or time to feel what you're feeling. You know... Have you ever heard people say, even these difficult times, well, they did the best they could, or I've done the best I could, and that's important. It's important for us to think like we've done the best we could, but I imagine if you've been in a difficult time that you don't always feel like it's the best. Sometimes you feel like the best you could do wasn't enough. It wasn't anything. But I want to assure you today, friends, if you offer God the best you can do in any situation, that God receives it. You know, one surprise of Easter is that God receives whatever we offer him, not just our best. God receives our best, and we'll talk about it in a minute, what he does with that, but God receives our least, too. God receives our tears. God receives our wounds. God receives whatever we offer him. That's an amazing thing about our great God, a surprise. But maybe you do try to offer your best, Like the women did that day. They wanted to offer God their best. Well, offering God our best brings some surprises. God receives what we offer. But he also is very pleased when we offer our best. He uses our best. He transforms and uses anything we offer because that's how great and amazing our God is. But when we offer our best, then he opens the storehouses of heaven And you'll have trouble dealing with all the goodness that God's going to pour in your life if you dare offer God your best. When those women ventured out on Easter morning, they wanted Jesus to have the best. 
even though it didn't turn out like they had hoped on Friday, how they expected, they still wanted to offer Jesus their best. And now that's kind of surprising, and it's wonderful. So I invite you today, friends, to try to offer God your best. Offer Jesus your best. No matter what's going on in your life, try to do your best for God and know that God's going to receive that and do surprising things with it. Now, the women have practical concerns as they enter towards the tomb, as any of us would. That's a big stone. It's hard to move. It would take some strong men to move it. And there was just some women early in the morning. And then they had to worry about the guards. What would the guards do to them? Would they even let them try to tend to Jesus' body? Would they cause problems? Would they be abusive to them? It was challenging to think about that. And what would happen when they got there? It had been a couple days. It's not a pleasant idea. You know, sometimes when you want to offer God your best, you may have to overcome other people's resistance. (laughs) You may have to overcome your own resistance first. You may need some gumption to offer God your best. You may need some determination. And God appreciates that about you. God considers your sacrifice and your effort part of the offering you're giving him. And it pleases God when you do that, especially when you persevere. That's one of the lines throughout the Bible is be strong and stand firm in your faith. That's what persevering is about. Consider the obstacles and ways to overcome them. And if you do, God has a great surprise awaiting you. When you offer your best, you'll be surprised what God will give you through Jesus. You know, remember back years ago, and maybe not that many years ago, when people on Easter, I know some of you have some pretty hats on today, but remember when women would wear really beautiful hats? But what I remember is how moms would dress us up in these really elaborate Easter costumes. Maybe they had knit a sweater for you. Maybe they made you wear the most uncomfortable shoes you have ever known. Right? That were polished to you could see your reflection in them. Have you ever worn anything like that? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Now, if you're like me, you might have thought you went a little overboard, Mom. I like looking at those pictures now, though. They're adorable, right? But it's like, ugh, that's a little overboard. And maybe it is. And you might say to me, well, Pastor Mary, God accepts us as we come. We don't need to do that. And I would agree with you. God accepts you as you come. The most important thing is to come. And I want to tell you, though, that God was thrilled with your mothers. And if you're a mother who did that, God was thrilled with you that day. Now, am I saying that God loves patent leather shoes Gloves and hats, tight ties and uncomfortable wear. (laughs) I don't know. I don't think he cares one way or the other about that. But what God does care about was your mothers were offering their best. They were doing their very best to bring it to Jesus. And I know God is pleased when you offer your best. God was thrilled with your mothers, with our mothers, God is thrilled with you when you offer your best, especially when it isn't easy for you. Offer your best and watch an Easter surprise. That first Easter, the surprise first, no guards, no stone, no problems. Hmm, pretty easy to get into it. That's a surprise. But then it gets better. They go in, and there's an angel waiting to see them. Now, that's a surprise. They were shocked. And I hope on Easter, when you offer God your best, you get a shocking surprise, a hard surprise that's hard to prepare for. 
but I hope you get one if you offer God your best. And friends, that surprise that the women got that day was the best one of all. Look, the tomb is empty. He's not here. He told you he was going to rise from the dead. He's been crucified, yes. He was dead, yes. But now he's risen from the dead, just as he told it you. Jesus is alive. Now that's an Easter promise and celebration and surprise. The best one of all, that Jesus is alive. And friends, that's the question you need to ask yourself today. What difference does it make in my life, in your life, that Jesus has risen from the dead? Where do you see the evidence of that? Where does the surprise show up? Well, I'll tell you where it showed up in this building this week. Not only that you're here, which of course I'm thrilled to see you. But on Wednesday, we have Kids Club in the Fellowship Hall and Classrooms. And I've been helping with that uh, because we need more volunteers. (laughs) You could help finish out the year. We'd love to have you. And we have a great group of kids. Of course we do, but we have kids. And so some of them need extra love. You know what I'm talking about, extra grace. We have a better group of leaders and volunteers that they put up with me, and I'm grateful for it. But uh, Miss Stacy and Miss Joyce and the rest of you guys do an awesome job. But one of these extra grace kids last fall, before we were ever talking about Easter, had to inform me about zombies. Yeah, I was uh, thrilled to talk about zombies at Kids Club when I'm trying to teach them about Jesus. And so they wanted to know if Jesus died and came back to life, wasn't he a zombie? Wow, we got our work cut out here. And interestingly enough, about that same time, although I didn't find out from my husband, he helps with his kids' club down at Pontiac. And interestingly enough, he had a kid asking the same question. His staff posted online when Pastor Paul was in great frustration saying, No, Jesus is not a zombie. (laughs) Well, this kid was convinced that Zombies are way better than Jesus. I couldn't convince him otherwise, and of course I moved on and just prayed about it. And this kid, extra grace, extra grace, week after week, are they paying attention? They're over here, they're over there, they're doing this, you know. You know the kid. So this week, we have a video, a movie, a very nice, sweet movie about Jesus' death and resurrection. And we get done with the movie, and sure enough, here's that kid right in front of me. What about the zombies? I don't understand this. If Jesus died, he rose from the dead, he's a zombie. But is he a zombie? No, Jesus is not a zombie. He's resurrected. What is resurrection? Well, in resurrection, you die, but you're alive. Zombies are still dead. They're the walking dead, remember? Jesus is not walking around dead. Jesus is walking around alive. How did Jesus go to heaven? In his resurrected body. That's what resurrection means. You are alive. Death can't touch you again. All of a sudden, surprise, Pastor Mary, The lights went on. Wow, resurrection is a lot better than zombies. Score one for Jesus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Surprise. God still is at work. Now, that's a big surprise, friends, because the only, I am confident with this kid especially, but several other kids The only message about Jesus they get, the only one, is here on Wednesdays. The only one. That's how important our Kids Club program is. So if you want to help transform lives, be a part. And I know you donate a lot of water, which we're grateful for. (laughs) But try showing up and having a conversation. Believe me, you don't have to have all the answers, but just have that one. Jesus is alive. 
He is resurrected. And we're Easter people. We're going to be resurrected too. That's the foundation of our peace. A Muslim became a Christian and some of his friends asked him, well, why are you a Christian? That is not what we believe. And he said, well, it's like this. You're going down a road and you come to a fork and there's two people standing there to tell you the direction. One's dead and one's alive. Who are you going to ask directions from? Who are you going to seek guidance from? Who are you going to follow? All the other world religions, all the other people who have a following, they have tombs. They have gravesides where you can go and visit them. We don't. It's empty. There's nothing in there. And in fact, they're not even sure which one it was because somebody's been buried in it now. Our testimony is that there's no grave to visit because Jesus is alive. We serve a risen Savior, one who has conquered all things, even death. But the best proof of the resurrection is not that we have no grave marker, no tomb. The best witness of the resurrection is exactly that, the witnesses. It's us. That we're still gathered in God's house 2,000 years later proclaiming that Jesus has risen from the dead. A frightened group gathered in a locked room went out and transformed the world for good. They wouldn't even stand by Jesus at the cross. And yet they went to torturous deaths as martyrs because they believed so greatly that Jesus had risen from the dead. They would not be moved. Friends, I hope that you come to convince yourself that Jesus has risen from the dead. It matters. It matters to our world. It matters to your life. It matters. And when you believe that and offer God back your best, then you'll be surprised. You'll be wonderfully surprised what Easter people can do and what God can bless you with because you are a resurrected person. Believe in Easter, friends. Believe in our great God because nothing is impossible with him. Amen? Amen.